Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. We've got something special here. This is the Galeo, not Galeo, Galeo from ATI American Tactical Imports coming up next on GB Guns. So, a little bit of history first before we dive into this. And uh, for anyone who's confused and didn't read, this is the tabletop review and field strip. We will do shooting in another portion. The Galeo is a U.S. Galil made with some surplus parts that give it just enough authenticity to be fun. For those of you unfamiliar with this platform, a fledgling Israel was in need of some weapons of their own, and a guy by the name of Uziel Galil, you might recognize that first name, yeah, he also invented the Uzi, created the Galil which is heavily, heavily based on the AK-47. This variant runs on 5.56 AK mags, comes with one Tapco mag, also came in a very decent hard case. Uh, not a super top line crazy expensive, but a decent hard case that's not gonna fall apart after the first time you use it. I think that's pretty cool. So anyways, this is based on a billet milled receiver and uh, functions a lot like an AK, controls like an AK, but it's in 5.56. They've included some surplus parts, such as this pistol grip, which definitely has some wear to it. And the folding buttstock with the steel plate. You can see it's got a nice angle there for rolling it up into your shoulder. Folds nice and clean out of the way. I think it's really cool that the hand guard is scratched up and has the dust in there. I went to Afghanistan and Iraq, and uh, I can tell you that is most certainly the dust that comes from everywhere. Now, obviously this dust is from the Near East, not the Middle East, but um, if you've spent any time in the desert out there, you know what I'm talking about by seeing that dust. I don't know, however, what was supposed to slide in and lock into this place here. Not a bayonet, maybe a grenade launcher, something like that. Obviously the former user of this handguard didn't have one. Plenty of airflow getting through to the barrel. You can see straight through there. So that's kind of neat. Uh, anyone who knows what goes on here, please comment down below for us. We have a place to maybe put a swivel, most certainly a bayonet lug, and uh, a point to attach our sling. And then on the very end, we've got a classic flash hider that's open all the way around. Kind of surprising for a desert shooting gun, considering that's going to cause lots of dust to kick up, but oh well. Moving up to our front sight post, we can see it's hooded with an open window to allow some light and maybe access to get in there and turn it. There's also this additional piece here that looks like it could flip up. I was unable to flip it up earlier on my own. Let's see if I can do it with a round. There we go. And it's got a giant copper bead. If I can maneuver this so it doesn't whack the camera. See there, that's an interesting, uh, maybe that's not even copper. That might have been a night sight at some point. That folds up and out of the way. We can see the vents on our exposed gas tube. No rear sight block like an AK would have because the rear sight it's way back here where it should be. <laughs> so we have a nice long sight radius. Safety on this side slides up and down. It does not overextend over the receiver like it does on some cheaply built AKs. You can see there's a little divot right there. That's to help prevent that from getting stuck. But it does seal everything nice and tight when it's closed. There's the ATI logo letting you know that this was made in South Carolina. Flip to the other side, and we have a safety. There's fire, they're safe. The marks are on there. We get the shadow off it, and it does activate the lever from the other side. It's pretty cool, and that can be done with the thumb of the shooting hand, assuming you're shooting right handed. I did notice the magazine release paddle extends a little more off to the right side and is flush on the left side. You can almost push your trigger finger forward and flip that out. We'll try that when we get to the range. But this shield hanging down here prevents any accidental dropping of the mag. 
The mags are a rock and lock type, as you'd expect from an AK. You're just going to need to find 5.56 AK mags. Next, we'll uh, field strip this thing and take a look inside the gun. So in preparation for just being able to field strip this uh, in the limited workspace that I have here, I wanted to show you the uh, stock mechanism. It does hold in place. There's kind of a, a firm spot at which point it keeps it from flipping open, but it's a nice heavy steel mechanism back there. Probably not going to uh, fail on us anytime soon. To remove the top cover, just like an AK, we're going to need to push this tab in. It's quite stiff. Far enough to get the top cover off. Now we can remove our rec recoil mechanism. Bring the bolt carrier rear up. And you notice the gas tube came off because the gas tube is, uh, see those tabs here, right there, that's what holds it in place. So without the pressure of the uh, rear cover, it comes right off. Easiest gas, gas tube cover I've ever seen uh, working on AK type platforms. But it lets us see nice and cleanly inside the gun. To take a look at construction, got nice, thick, strong rails there they're going to make for probably some very consistent and very smooth shooting the trigger is of course your standard ak style we do have a shepherd's crook in there to keep the pins in place and the coiled wire spring system that uh, we're used to on ak's so everything looks pretty nice there the carrier and piston has a bit of a dome on the piston and this interesting holes here. We do have a little bit of play there. Somebody like Rob Ski can tell you if that's important or not. The vertical handle that lets you reach over the top a little easier to grab and rack with the left hand. And if we take our actual bolt out, you can see we've got a nice big extractor that is going to be grabbing on to roughly a third of the end of the brass to make sure it gets the brass out of there. Also, the more surface area engaged on the brass, the less likely we're going to be shearing that brass since uh, AK styles tend to uh, uh, eject, extract and eject rather violently. We can see that our firing pin is actually pinned in there and it is spring loaded. That spring loading helps keep slam fire from happening, which is always a positive. I haven't seen or experienced many slam fires, but I understand enough to not want it to happen. Slam firing is when just the sheer momentum of the mass moving forward causes the firing pin to keep moving and sometimes hit hard enough to sit on the ground. So to put everything back together, we're gonna go gas tube first. fits nicely and tightly into uh, this billet receiver here. Then we're going to get our piston going. Sometimes it's easiest to start upside down. You want the tail of your bolt to be flush here. Rotate it over and set it down. Here we're pushing down against the spring pressure that's on the hammer and slide it forward. Next, we can put our recoil assembly back in, and it fits back into these grooves here that it came out of. And the top cover, this one's a little tricky because the tail is so long, it's almost easiest to start by hooking the tail inside the cover there, then driving forward to make sure that you've got the uh, lip here down in the little ridge that's in there. And uh, if you guys ever wonder why some things look so darn difficult when I do them, it's because I'm doing this uh, at a 90 degree misorientation. So I'm actually looking through the camera down <laughs> at the gun to try to do all this. And uh, that can be tough to do. In fact, I might need to take this off camera right quick to get it all together. 
together. The top covers fit very snugly. I'm gonna make sure we're over the lip there. Everything's good, and you can see the tail is not quite where it wants to be. We'll give it a whack. Now it's lined up, and work our bolt, and that kicked the tail out to where it needs to be. Speaking of working the bolt, let's take a look at how smooth that action is. There's no hang up point. That's because of those nice thick billet rails that keep everything pretty smooth. The trigger is also a little different on the shoe. It's more of a vertical fit than your standard AK. See how that feels. Comes back to a wall and breaks. Reset is very positive and pushes your finger out to it right at the breaking spot. This is going to be a fun shooter. Our rear sight has a 300 and a 500 spot. You can also flip up this rear night sight setup, those big ears, to uh, help frame along with the big sights that were uh, up on the front. This is going to be a fun one to shoot. I haven't done a lot of 5.56 AKs. I do have one old one from Zestava from back in the day, but it uses AR mags. I wish we had more than one of these around. I'd love to see if maybe Gun Mag Warehouse or somebody has one. If you know of a good source of 5.56 AK mags, let us know in the comments below. We'll get this thing out. We'll do uh, what's for dinner. We'll do some accuracy as best we can with irons only. Now it does not have a point for mounting a rail, which means, uh, well, it helps save some weight and also makes it less snag when it's run, running against your body if slung, which is probably the intent there. But for uh, the way we shoot, uh, it means no optic. That's the ATI Galeo tabletop review and field strip. We'll get it out to the range and see you there. Thanks for watching.